Hi, my name is Heather Feather, and today I wanted to talk about the naming of things. I absolutely intended an Andrew Bird reference there. Shout out to his Fantastic Strange. <laughs> I was talking to a friend today about um, a medical condition, and I've been working with um, some rebirthing breath work brilliant medicine people. Rebirthing breath work is a somatic therapy that was taught by Leonard Orr, where we engage in a specific type of breathing in order to move trauma out of the musculature. Highly recommend it. You can um, go to Facebook and look for Emily Ashley or look for Danny Halam. They both offer these practices and they're so powerful. You feel free to reach out to me if you want those names or the connection. However, one of the things that can happen when you do rebirthing breath, breath work is you get what's called tetany. Tetany is where your hands, in some fashion, will the musculature will tighten, and then you won't be able to release the hands, um, typically until after the practice is done. And then slowly, when the practice is complete, the hands start to mobilize again. Tetany is also a medical condition, and it's a medical condition where you're um, the, you know, the musculature in your extremities where you have a tension that is present that doesn't release in the lifetime because it's also a, a disorder, a disease. So what, what came up in this conversation that I felt was valuable to share, I actually have other videos I want to do, but it was like, oh, this is, yeah, this, this realization is, is helpful Every piece of content that has ever been written, every single thing that has ever been named, was named by a two-legged. A two-legged. Somewhere at some point named that and said, ooh, I'm having this experience with a client that is like this. I'm going to call that tetany. And so what happened is they had some new experience. They gave it a label. What I think is, is um, likely not often considered is that do you trust the source and the label maker? Or are you going to let them sit in the throne room as the authority on that label for all things? Because you can experience tetany as a result of rebirthing breath work. In my experience, every student that I've shared this practice with, because it's one of the things spirit guides me to offer to my students in my more advanced classes, like Be a Healer and Quantum Self, um, they all have release. Many, many people experience the tetany, but they all have release. So therefore, it's not a disease or a disorder. It's just a condition that's presence itself. I want to elucidate this point that everything that's ever been labeled, a two-legged labeled it, a human person. Somebody that is fallible could be wrong. <laughs> they're making an estimation of what they're experiencing in their reality and they're labeling it. And they're saying, I'm going to call this this. Doesn't mean that it's not that or wasn't that in that condition. It just means that what I'm experiencing is that a lot of two-leggeds will go to medical information, the medical log, what the doctor said, what the medical textbook said, um, and, and if we're going to lean heavy on textbooks, I, I used to work for a college textbook organization um, and I started a recycling program there. And in that recycling program, as I was taking the books to recycle them, one of them I looked at, um, a philosophy book, and in the back they defined witchcraft as praising Satan, <laughs> satanic acts, which is not what witchcraft is. That's what Satanism is. <laughs> it's like, what? Who wrote this? So absolutely false information. I've spent lifetimes in the focus of witchcraft, and that's not what it is. And that's false. And it was written by a two-legged, and it's in a textbook. So the question I'm, I'm thinking on and in, inviting everyone to think on today is, do you trust the source? Do you trust the source? And is that going to be the authority on that topic for you forever? Are you going to trust that to be the authority? There is um, an easy forgetting what the source, I mean, like the brain can go like, I trust doctor, therefore doctor accurate. Yes, 100% accurate. Thank you. I trust Harvard, therefore Harvard accurate. Yes, everything Harvard says accurate. Every two-legged is fallible. Every two-legged has room for error. 
every hairdresser, I mean, I just got a dope cut from a phenomenal being that knows what's what, <laughs> but every hairdresser has some day, some moment where they didn't give that perfect cut. The tattoo artist that maybe had a learning moment, <laughs> the, uh, and, and, you know, the doctor that was giving their best guess. I've been to doctors that have given me every stomach test that is available with medical science. And their conclusion was that I have irritable bowel syndrome. And irritable bowel syndrome is what they tell you have when they give you every stomach test in the universe. You have an endoscopy where they put you under and they look at the contents of your stomach. You get a colonoscopy. You do all these different things. Um, and then they, when they can't figure it out, they just go, oh, it's irritable bowel or spastic colon. When we don't get any results with the test, this is what you have. What they didn't do is test me for food allergens. And this year of my life, I went to a naturopath and I have an extreme allergy to gluten and to wheat. Um, I'm also allergic to quinoa, which I was eating, <laughs> trying to avoid gluten and wheat. So, so there's, there's actually several allergens present and I've been off of them for months and I feel great and I'm thriving in my wellness. Um, because I don't have irritable bowel syndrome. I have a food allergen. So a doctor told me I do have irritable bowel syndrome. So we have to really um, consider, I think it's interesting, even in the modern age, a lot of um, spiritual healers, psychic surgeons, um, medical intuitives, they have to constantly apologize for their gifts. Like, please do, you know, like, I am not a medical doctor. Please be sure to consult your doctor. That's the age, the liturgic age we live in, where everyone's afraid of getting sued. And so all of these people with tremendous medical gifts, or even gifts as an herbologist, let's say. Herbology has been around for thousands of years. Current medical capacities are brand new. They're in their infancy. Herbology is a medicine that has been used. It's in wisdom. It's in a, It's beyond adulthood. It is wise now. It's been around for thousands of years. Many cultures have used it. There's lots of reported information around it, reported by two leggets, <laughs> which could also be inaccurate. Um, I was thinking about this yesterday, too, as a psychic and intuitive. It's like I can feel the pressure from other two leggets when I do a kundalini healing or when I do... Um, the fantastic strange that is me when I do my attunement to my inner intuitive voice and I share my inner seeing and I share my inner knowing just like a barber just like a doctor just like anyone there is a margin for error like are you is any or anyone is anyone watching this video 100% accurate 100% of the time in everything they do so it's weird when we go to something that seems more etheric or more spiritual. It's like, you better be 100% accurate. And it's like, okay, okay, I'm not a human. <laughs> ridiculous demand. It's a ridiculous demand. Um, I find it ridiculous, too, that those that have understandings of medicine that's been around for thousands of years almost have to constantly qualify what they're doing and offering and and say, don't trust me, go to a doctor, check in with your doctor. It's like, your doctor is another two-legged that trusts this form of healing. And there are many modalities of healing in this realm. And, and if I broke my arm right now, I would go to a doctor. There are ways in which um, going to doctors has supported me historically. As somebody that has experienced chronic depression and used to smoke, um, there was a period of severe depression when I took Wellbutrin and that medication helped me to quit smoking and to be less depressed and it actually increased my energy um, and I didn't experience a lot of side effects with it. But I can say almost all Western medicine that I've ever heard tell of has side effects. So is that a medicine if we heal one condition but give you another? You know, it's like, oh, don't worry, we'll fix your heartburn, but you may have suicidal ideation. It's like, I don't want that. That's not... Medicine. That's not medicine. That's just creating, it's trading problems. That's a problem trader. So neither here nor there. I'm not vilifying Western medicine. There are many beautiful things that have come from it. Many understandings. You know, people can see a fetus before it becomes a baby. There are all kinds of things that it can do that obviously like herbology cannot or, you know, psychic surgery, well, probably could give you a description. <laughs> but, but I think it is important for us to consider the source, consider the source. And my invocation and my invitation to you this day 
is to consider having yourself be the source in your life for what truth is. Put yourself in the chair called the throne room and you be the ruler of the kingdom of what is truth for you. And weigh carefully the consideration that any information you read, I mean, it can come from the imagination. Obviously, we have all kinds of cool things like sci-fi, which I dearly love, and um, cartoons, which I also love. I, you know, I there's comedy. I freaking love comedy. Sometimes it can be observational. Sometimes it's just weird, which is fun too. So, so it's not necessarily that that everything that humans create is based in an experience they have, but we are labeling things, naming things, saying this is that. And we have to consider the source. If it is written by a two-legged, it was written by a two-legged with an ego. It was written with a, by a two-legged with fallibility because it's one of the conditions of being a two-legged. Like if you were in a state of exalted enlightenment, you'd probably just transcend and exit the flesh costume and be done with existence. If you're, if you are in a state of like, like true, pure wholeness in your expression, then you don't need to be down here labeling things and being like, want, don't want. You'd be done. <laughs> you just float off planet. <laughs> so if we're down here in a body and we're experiencing earth school in a dichotomy, which we are, up, down, good, bad, right, wrong, left, right, this is true, that's false. It's important to consider that maybe you've said, oh, any text that comes from a doctor is true. Okay, great. If that's the philosophy you want to follow, love it, bless it, wonderful, well done. I'm glad you've chosen what your truth is. You know, and then just walk forward in that way. I don't I don't think that like my, the way I view the world is the way for everyone to view the world. I do think that each each being is a creator of a world, a multiverse, a reality from their consciousness and it is important that we be the chooser of what is the truth in our multiverse. What is the truth? Is that truth? Can I implicitly trust it? And I'm going to invite and invoke that if you're not sure to always go within. Did this feel like truth to me? Is that true? If it's true, why, why do I have nonstop questions about it for months on end? You know, doesn't truth just align? Why do I, why do I keep getting to pick this apart? <laughs> so... Also, you'll find in your own life experience, irrespective of books or what is written, you may have encountered many two-leggeds. Their truth is not your truth. Their truth is not your truth. And you may find that, um, for example, my truth is love is the answer. As a witch and as someone who has been a practicing witch since she was around 13, 14 years old, love is the answer. In it harm none, do what you will is the law I follow with witchcraft. I never cast a spell on another because you have free will and I would never harm your free will. I honor your free will. I will cast a spell on myself to invoke and align and be a mental alchemist and align my consciousness to greater prosperity, greater harmony, greater, you know, whatever it is that I'm seeking for self. But I would never cast a baneful spell, a harmful spell. I would never do that because... Love is the answer. Now, to other people, and I've definitely had this conversation with some of the people in the Austin um, witchcraft community, that, like, that's not their truth. And they're very clear and quick to let me know, not my truth. Great. Cool. I'm glad you're aligned with your truth. Beautiful. That's. I think that's great work you're doing there. Everybody's truth is unique and distinct and different, and we get to choose what truth is. Um, it can also be precious to not be hateful. <laughs> towards people that don't hold your truth, judgmental, attacking. I'm constantly working to maintain compassion, composure, grace, um, the extension of love, the practice of unconditional love to people that hold dif different truths than me, like a conservative or a moderate or um, a deeply um, um, religious philosophy follower that that religion evokes a lot of Agreement around judgment. This day I'm asking you, what truth do you choose to rule your kingdom? And are there any that you need to question? Blessed be.